Welcome to this program. I'm going to touch on an area that uh, will affect all of us uh, because I'm going to deal with uh, an area to do with parents and children uh, and uh, the offenses that uh, normally go there. Uh, so please uh, follow as we even pray to start the program. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for indeed you have been gracious to us. We thank you for the opportunity to share your word and to bring cl clarity on some of the issues that uh, affect families. So we pray that you shall minister to us by your Holy Spirit, and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. So I have talked so much in other programs concerning offenses, concerning how they come, and forgiveness, and all that, but I, I want to emphasize the major, of, uh, uh, the, the, the major <clears throat> offense that uh, affect children, which is violence between parents. When there is violence between parents, parents don't think that the children are being affected. I guess some do, but not to the degree that uh, the problem is. In Isaiah 32, we have seen it before, Isaiah 32 verse 18 says, My people will dwell in peaceful habitation, secure dwellings, 
and in quiet resting places. I don't take that for granted. My people, God is saying, my people shall dwell in peaceful habitation, secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. Children need that. Children are the ones that need that, that, that most. You as a parent, consider and think, a child is 100% dependent. And a child cannot do anything for, for herself or himself when they are, they are tiny, babies. They depend on somebody 100%. And in most cases, they depend on the dad and mom to do everything, everything for them. So it is dad and mom who create this type of climate. A peaceful habitation, secure dwellings, quiet resting places for the children. So what happens is that when parents start fighting, the whole thing is dis disrupted. The quietness is no longer. The, 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 the noises, the voices that are raised when people are fighting, they affect children terribly. You as a mother think, six, year, six months old, nine months old, and then somebody hits you. Say you are, your husband hits you, and you lift your voice very sharp as a cry. That baby is likely to cry. But you have not touched the baby. Nobody touched the baby. But that baby is likely to cry. But the baby has no clue. It's only six months old, nine months old. But the baby will cry. So what, what, what is it that makes the baby cry? It's because the inner man, the, sp the, spirit, the spirit of that baby has been threatened. And that sharp noise, that sharp cry, affects the child on the inside. The damage is already done. And when the child is sleeping, you may find that the, the child is like dreaming or shaking like that, shaking like that, shaking like that. Because the, the child has been shaken. And the damage is done. That child will never know what happened. But the child is already damaged. But worse still, if the child is four, four years, three years, four years, five years, and then he or she sees violence between parents, that child will never be perfect again. All of us were children, and we are affected equal, equally the same way, irrespective of where we are now. Maybe the damage came that early. Now, Malachi chapter 2, verse 16. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce, for it, it covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. Here we are dealing with marriage, and God hates divorce and separation. It is not good for a family. Our God is a, is a God of marriage. And our God expects our marriages to have uh, his virtues. Because he's the one who initiated marriage. He created man and woman in his image according to his likeness. Peaceful. And he, this scripture we are seeing that he... He wants his people to dwell in peaceful habitation, secure dwelling places, and quiet, uh, quiet resting places. Secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. That is what is inside of him, the God who created us. So we should be feeling the same. If that is his desire, if we are like him, we should desire to live according to what he is feeling. So when that is jeopardized, the children are the most hit by that, that thing because it is us who raise our children. It is us who should teach our children the ways of the Lord and the, the character of God. But when we become not like God, I don't know we become like who because we don't become like God with that violence. So the whole thing is disrupted. So the children are offended. They don't know what to do. And there's something aching. And they may not know how to express it because they are still children. 
along the way, the children will be in a mess. Violence around parents is a killer disease number one for children. Fighting parents provide insecure environment for children. It is now contradicting the will of God because that violence is creating a very different environment which is insecure. Again, that will shape the children badly. In fact, children raised up in an environment of fighting parents hardly get married. I said that in another program. Especially the girl child. They don't survive. There are too many who cannot get married. And again, there are equally many who are married, but the marriage is so rough that it is like a, such a heavy project. Everything is about this marriage, and it has not actually tightened. It is still here like falling after very many years of labor to sustain it. It should not be so. Relationships should not be projects. Relationships should develop themselves and grow and grow stronger purely because of time with each other, availability, sharing, counsel with each other, working with each other. That's how, how relationships grow. If you push it, it refuses to go. It backfires. But when people have issues and they are hurt, they are wounded, Relationships become such a struggle, not just in marriage, all forms of relationships. They, they backfire, they resist, because you are, you are getting too much involved in the relationship. You are telling people, let's love one another. Can you stand and kiss one another, embrace one another, physical? No, 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 no. It is inside. Marriage is not here. It is inside. And they are inside. You, you, even if you do it physically, by the time they get home, they are going to fight. You have not done anything. It must be from inside. And if the inside is rotting, if the inside is so destabilized, then there is no place for that relationship to grow. It can't grow. Everything has been corrupted. So, so children, when parents fight, the whole climate changes. And I have seen many people struggle. One time I had someone from, from I think it was from US, and. <clears throat> He was a drunkard. He was such a drunkard. He got married locally here. He was from U.S., although he's a Kenyan, but he, he grew up in U.S. He was such a drunkard. It was terrible. He could not do anything for himself. So when he came, we are sitting, we are diagnosing. He said, they are in U.S., not in Kenya now, but they are Kenyans in U.S. The parents fighting. They fought and fought, and he was saying as a little child, he would come in between them when they are fighting, and they are naked. Shame. A little child is coming to separate naked parents fighting. That's not proper. It's not fair for the children. So the images of fighting people, naked parents fighting, how is he going to deal with those images? So, so this, this young man, he saw those images, and they were very bad images. And as he grew up, he was now a little bigger. He got, because of uh, the dynamics and the issues that go on around, he went on around his life, he was totally in a mess, and uh, someone else, uh, a foreign person, wooed uh, him and went with him, and he sodomized him. And that now destroyed the child completely, completely. And this is why he was drinking himself to death. He did not know what was going on in his life. So I want to, I, I want to, to ask you as parents, please don't allow the children to see your differences. I know it's not easy because we all have reasons why we behave the way we behave. But please don't destroy the children. Please don't destroy the children. It's very painful even for children. And now this young man who was coming, he already had a wife. The wife was in pain, and the, uh, he had already he, he had a child. So what was supposed to happen to this son of his? He was going to be in a mess, because this, this man was a drunkard. 
We have had many cases of parents, fathers, drunkards, and when they come home, they make so much noise until the children are twisted. They, they, they feel they are not loved, and they, they, the father is doing shameful things, and they, he has a very bad reputation with the people until they don't want to be called by the name of that father. It's not fair. And we don't want to see our, our, our father in heaven from that, that, that perspective. It's not fair. Because we, we went through issues with our own fathers and they, 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 we, we became so defiled. So we trust God that, uh, that God will heal us and God will help us. Colossians 3.21 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Do not provoke your children. When we do shameful things, our children are, feel ashamed, ashamed and they, they, they feel provoked. In Malachi 4.6, 4, it says, And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to, the, to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. The, uh, this this, this uh, scripture has bothered me for many years. Why should God curse the earth? Because of fathers and children differing. I don't know, but you know, we have a father in heaven. And these fathers, and we have children, we are children of God. And these fathers are like a, a, a role model or uh, the image. They are supposed to, have, to create an image of God in us. Because they are fathers. And a child will know, will see their father first before they know the heavenly father. But I believe when there are differences, then the children are going to have a very negative image of the father. And we are more concerned about children. That image, you are likely to transfer the same image to God the father. So God is not amused. And it's, it is the same case concerning marriage. And I said that. Our marriage is like a, role, a model of the marriage between Christ and the church. When our marriage is dirty and is upside down, God is not amused. And the devil is, takes advantage over that. So God is not amused. And this, this scripture was talking about John the Baptist with the spirit of Elijah. And uh, if you go to Luke chapter 1, you discover... When John was to be born, it was narrated he was going to do exactly what this scripture is saying. So God wants the, heart of, the hearts of the children to turn to their fathers and the hearts of the fathers to turn their children. If not, there will always be trouble. It will look like the family is cursed. And when children are hurt, children are very bad because they are so damaged because children are very soft. They are forming inside and outside. So when this, this hostility comes, the hostile climate, a child is hit, bang, and then the child twists. It's not the same as when a mature person is offended. The child will twist, and that is being like Mephibosheth, being lame. So that person, although you may grow up and to be a, a, a mature person, but the behavior, the failures, failure, 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 failure. One time, someone came and said, Pastor, look at me, look at me. Look at, he quoted the one CEO of a bank. Look at me and look at him. We were in college together, we were in university together. I was doing better than him. But now look at me and look at him. I don't have a house, I don't have a car, I, I can hardly put food on the table, I can hardly maintain the children. Look at me. Then we were looking at the problem. As we were analyzing to check whether he has a background problem, I asked him, how is your relationship, uh, relationship with the dad? Oh, he said it's perfect. Oh, we love each other. We love each other. I, looking at him, I thought he did not understand my question. I told him, I'm not saying now. I'm saying, when you are a child, his eyes turned and looked like uh, there, were, there were tears inside. 
he remembered that when he was young, their father abandoned them and went away, left them struggling. He came back, yes, at, after some years. But even after he came back, when this, this, this young man now, he was a young man in school, when he was sent away because of school fees, the father did not bother. Life continued with that, like nothing is happening. So he had to work himself, do something to do, get the money, and go back to school. Now, as we are talking, his eyes are looking like uh, someone who wants to cry. I told him that's where the problem is. Don't answer the question. I'm not talking about your relationship now, because now you can do many things and you can invest in each other, and that will not correct that mistake there. That's a spiritual mistake. It's a spiritual error there. It must be corrected from the spiritual angle. In investing finances and, and a lot of love after the damage does not correct the damage. The damage is a spiritual issue. It, may be, it must be addressed from the spiritual angle so that it, is, it loses the power. So I told him, you need God to go back to your dad. You see, that is not easy when you have a good relationship with someone and you are saying, I became bitter and I hated you at whatever stage. He will want to know, what do you mean? We have walked with you, been working with you. What is it that you are saying? We have not reached uh, where I should give all these details, but you know you should not accuse him for anything. You are confessing your sin, not his. And that becomes very hard for many people because they want to be courteous, especially when you are working properly with a person. Now, if you are dealing with the history, it becomes very hard to communicate, and you feel stranded. But for him, he had to do it, and he did it. The moment he did it, immediately, his job situation changed. And he moved forward. He bought a car. He bought a house. He opened a company, and he was able to do business in a more elaborate way. And he has put his children through university. Everything is working at nil cost, as it were. What cost? Just humbling yourself and being able to put, a mag put, put, put on the magnifying glass and accepting, yes, I agree. This is a problem. Then you address it. And there is no financial cost. Just the heart. Being either soft or hard. If you harden, nothing happens. You continue the way you are. But if you accept, yes, there is a problem, and then you address that problem, then it will amaze you. It will not take time. It will not take time for you to change and turn around. So there are many, 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 many testimonies we can give. But we trust the Lord that you will not be stranded along the way. So we are looking at the cases that may have to do, to do with the violence and offenses by parents. So we ha we had a, I had a case, uh, another case, as we wind up this program, I want to give you this testimony if there's time, I'll give you another, another one. In this case, this, uh, this lady was losing jobs, losing jobs, losing jobs. You get, you, you, uh, she, she gets a job, then it, it finishes. Get another one, it finishes. She was in the city, goes to another city, and then another city. Same thing, same thing over and over again. Then back to, to, to the city of Nairobi until she gave up, and she came and told me, Pastor, I give up. I uh, don't understand how I get jobs, but of course you lose time in between. And she's saying, I go back home, Oshago. I say, no, 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 no. Let's diagnose. Take, take a day or two. Let's look at it and see whether there's anything. So what happened is that uh, she said that when she was a little girl, uh, uh, girl when she was a little girl, she, uh, the, uh, the, she loved dad so much, and dad loved her, so they, had, they were so close with dad. But one day, she saw dad beat mom. She hated him with a passion. She hated all men. To the extent that she turned les lesbian. And she would train others, coach others. So marriage was a mirage. So I told her, go back. That hatred, and it's historical, 
Just go back and you solve that. Sort it out. Because there are underlying issues. We don't want to deal with the issues that are on the surface. And I did not even tell her to stop that habit. Because I don't want to dwell on the symptoms. Because the sim symptoms are boring. They are very boring. Because you, are, you keep doing the, the thing, you are not getting results. You deal with the underlying issue. So she was able to do that. Immediately she turned around. The job she got took her five years. She got a better one. I don't know how many years then she got a better one. Now she's in a very comfortable uh, level. And her with her husband, they are prospering because she got married and they got, they, they got a, a, a child. And I don't know, they have, they have many, how many vehicles. So people can turn around, not because there is a cost, but simplicity of heart, managing their issues, their, their hearts, as we said, we need to manage our hearts, not being hard, not being stubborn, because stubbornness is, is an issue. If you harden your heart, you can hardly succeed in anything in God. God wants to heal people who are simple, soft, who are, who are ready to, to, to listen to the, the instructions and trust him. He wants to be trusted. He is a father. God is a father. And I want, I, I want to encourage you. Maybe you are there. Maybe you are not even saved. Maybe you are going through issues and issues and issues. There is no issue that is beyond God. He reveals to us what he wants us to know. What he keeps to himself, that is not ours. What he has revealed to us is ours. And we must take full advantage and this is why we are here mainly to explain all this to all these people that are in trouble. There are many. Ask me, I'll tell you. There are many. And not just here in our country. Even in other countries. In other countries, it's the same. I had someone who saw, I don't know how he got to see the book I've written, This Life, Through the Valley of the Shadow of Death into, into Revival. He's in Lilongwe in Malawi. And he's pleading, how can I find this book? How can I see this book? I told you of this family, or this, uh, the family, the church in, in Canada. That lady who was reading the book, and she, she had borrowed the book from the pastor. And she's trying to write everything because everything is relevant. And she was saying, I, I find my heart not able to write at the same speed I'm reading because I'm getting revelation in every uh, paragraph. It's like she has to copy the book. And she's wondering, can, I, can, can we access this book online and all that so that other people can also have access? I just told you in another program, this, this lady in Israel, her life has completely changed. But even you, the, the, the viewer, you can change. You can be transformed. You can have peace. You can have joy. You can have joy. And this is the, the, the desire that I have for you. And I want to trust God for you, that surely we shall change. And your family, your children, your brothers, your sisters, for how long are you going to struggle? And there is an answer somewhere. Practical, not theoretical. We are not talking about Bible, Bible stories. Yes, we looked at Mephibosheth. But we are saying people are healing. I don't know whether Mephibosheth healed. But we looked at the story. But people are healing as we talk. We don't even have to touch the people or go near people. God is not limited by distance. They are healing their nations. I told you about the person in, in, in the, the, the lady in Germany. I've told you about the lady in, in, in Israel. We have never met, but they are healing. Why? All they need is information. All they need is how to approach God, how, what to do with what is going on. I want to pray with you that God will, gi will give you a revelation. We shall, I know we shall continue, but for now, let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the viewers. I thank you for all those that have heard your word. And your word shall not fall to the ground and, and break. It shall accomplish what you sent it for. This word is precious and to many. So, Lord, I pray that the, all those that have been listening, they shall be transformed, they shall be changed, they shall value their lives, they shall not be like a Mephibosheth. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you 
uh, faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God uh, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and ma majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.